Oggi per bene. Uh, so, uh, uh, hello everybody. Uh, what I uh, actually uh, want, wanted us to do today is, uh, is uh, more talk about re-socializing um, uh, property or public goods or nature or whatever and and because many of us have in different contexts contexts experience in it then maybe we can uh, share uh, the the difficulties the the successes and and, and so on so uh, as uh, we read before um uh, and uh, as many people know um uh, with a uh, with a gradual uh, um, introduction or, or coming into being of capitalism uh, there was a, a need to privatize uh, uh, all kinds of of a public, uh, um, you can't even call it public ownership. It was either uh, non-ownership in the sense it was not owned or owned collectively, uh, inhabited more collectively than, than owned collectively. Um, and at one point in different stages, uh, I'm just saying that because there is a per perception that, uh, which is only partially true, that uh, with the industrialization and the rise of of, um, of uh, factories and so on, there was a, a new form of uh, ownership came into, uh, into being uh, that of private property, but uh, uh, actually the process that they took a few centuries and uh, in which uh, um, people, farmers were basically uh, kicked off of their land, uh, whether they owned it uh, as uh, privately or collectively or uh, as the vassals of of a few of a feudal lord, but uh, they were there and uh, they needed to be kicked off, they expropriated from their land uh, in order for <laughs> for <laughs> for capitalism to come into be, basically. Um, now. Um, uh, we won't go into all the phases of uh, of capitalism because that would uh, take uh, uh, much longer. But uh, there was a move from uh, basically inhabiting the land or the property, the house, the the animals, or without a clear uh, concept of ownership to a, a, a situation of, of a, it, this is what, a, a, because the, 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 this a, kind of a, inhabiting the prob a property was because it was only used basically for self-sustenance, was not a, used to make a profit. And even if the feudal lords had uh, had to raise taxes for wars and so on, it was conceived as part of uh, of uh, protecting the community and and so on, and not as something uh, personal. Now it can be debated, of course, in different situations. It took different forms. But that's the general uh, uh, functioning. 
and uh, while in uh, uh, as we read before uh, this uh, cohabitation of certain uh, uh, territories uh, needed to be privatized and usually it would be uh, uh, by uh, by expropriating uh, the inhabitants simply kicking them off the land and then even if they uh, brought them back it was under different con con social condition or social relation it was not a, a kind of a, a communal uh, uh, um, con communal living with all its hierarchies and so on, but a very defined structure of a uh, capitalist worker, which, as we read this uh, afternoon, didn't take place only in the urban cities and uh, in factories, but also in the rural. Uh, places and agriculture was not done anymore for for need but for profit um, so even if uh, later on um, agriculture seemed to to be uh, uh, looked like it was the same it was the the social uh, relations between the the owner of the land and the and the workers of the land was different than in feudal times uh, when um, it was one community. Um, so that that is a big uh, difference. Uh, with that. Of course, uh, uh, the original idea of the commons also disappeared. Um, and so uh, we know the situation uh, now uh, um, uh, with colonialization, this uh, even uh, extended uh, to other uh, territories and the extraction from both people and the uh, and nature uh, became intensive um, and till the situation i mean till basically in, in some places in africa uh, it's cheaper to buy dutch onions than to grow them yourself uh, uh, so uh, so this is the, and, and, and under this uh, excuse, they can, uh, uh, they can change the whole, um, instead of the whole uh, community structure, instead of uh, farming for self-sustenance, uh, uh, they can create uh, uh, mines or shopping malls or whatever they, they see profitable and even uh, uh, incite wars that would justify the, col the, the colonialization. And this is called uh, so-called uh, neo-colonialism or, um, or economic colonialism. Uh, but um, uh, I, what I wanted more to discuss uh, today uh, is how in this um, situation can we talk about uh, about uh, socialization of uh, nature or, or any kinds of uh, property. Uh, and the first uh, uh, question for me today is, uh, you know, when um, uh, when Marxism, wh when we're talking about uh, uh, socialization of property, uh, um, we're mainly talking uh, about 
very confined territorial projects. Uh, whether it's a, a, a publicly owned uh, um, uh, like a, a heating or water or whatever in the city or something like that, whether it's uh, some kind of uh, uh, public park or, or some kind of uh, um, uh, property outside town or agricultural land. But uh, uh, the, the, one of the main questions for me is uh, how can we build up a system that will, will be actually international uh, in the um, in the in the sense that uh, Mark uh, uh, saw the 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 vision of communism as a uh, associated independent uh, enterprises <clears throat> because uh, I don't think we can um, you know uh, um, in this. Uh, uh, time, there, there are two discourses. One is uh, the anti-nationalism uh, discourse, uh, and the other one is the socialization discourse. But uh, any, uh, even if we think of a, of a cooperative like Mondragon uh, in, in the Basque country, it uh, started from uh, uh, it started from the Basque country exactly as a as a cooperative of Basque of, with a in, with a aim of uh, creating some autonomous uh, nationally autonomous uh, capacity. Um, so we want. In the process of socialization, we want, in one hand, to avoid this kind of uh, uh, nationalization of the social property. Uh, and, uh, and I'm saying it because, uh, uh, you know, in, in many of the left-wing um, uh, groups or even uh, parties, uh, uh, like the Labour Party, the Corbyn Labour Party, there's all the time the question of nationalization. So, uh, but again, you know, uh, uh, it is um, very problematic exactly because of the, this question of the nation state. <clears throat> and on the other hand, uh, there's the, the idea of the commons that, uh, that really works uh, usually or Refer to usually in, as a very small territorial uh, uh, um, endeavor. So, um, but in in a group, I don't think we can really uh, take this thing seriously, except of, as an experiment or um, or as something. Um, uh, um, um, you know, some kind of a, a local a kind of a exception a, in a world that is globalized and uh, in which uh, a multi um, multinational uh, firms like Amazon and, and others uh, are, are working. I mean, this kind of local experiments, whether on the national level or, lo or really local level, will all be de will always be dependent on these large, larger structures um, of of uh, capitalist uh, distribution, and and uh, and we're not really avoiding. Uh, we cannot go out of of the system in some way. So this is one aspect of it. And the other aspect of it, uh, which I often 
find is um, is the question of how do you run a democratic uh, or not? I mean, democratic in quotation mark uh, management structure or an equal uh, management structure. Uh, because more often than not, uh, as people know from practices, if you have, <coughs> if you have a, a large group of people, especially if it's a cross-class group of people, uh, it ends up that uh, the more educated, the more um, uh, the more the people who have more experience in management, uh, which is usually the middle class, take over and then they more manage in the name of the other people rather than in the interest of others. Um, and it's a problem because uh, uh, even if people come originally from working class uh, areas uh, or more working class families or working class tradition, one in, once they get into the position of management, then uh, they they reclaim they claim the the privileges, and it's very hard to uh, take them out of the. Um, of the of this role of this uh, kind of interest, so I think that uh, the, the, that it's a real problem, uh, especially that uh, today the most of this uh, socializing projects are done um, are done from a, a, a place of uh, ideolog ideological uh, um, experimentation rather than from a uh, question of need. Um, one of the examples I wanted to, to discuss was the question of the urban gardening that was very popular from the mid-90s in different contexts, not just in the artistic context, but it also was experiment within the artistic uh, with, with different artists took took it on and usually it lasted for a certain time uh, on the back of a few enthusiastic and there was no um, the, the, there was a, a there was it it was a problem to have it really uh, keep the 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 participative uh, management of it, and one of the reasons I think it uh, happened it happens like that, and it's not just urban gardening; it's many such uh, uh, collective projects. Is that you know, in the end of the day, it's easier to buy vegetables in the supermarket than to grow them yourself. And with all the good uh, intention and the uh, ideological de dedication, uh, it's uh, quite hard to keep it up if there's no real need for it. Uh, so I think that one of the Big problems of this uh, kind of uh, ideological project is that um, um, is that is to find what is, what are the real needs that can that can get uh, that in under which the community can get together. Uh, the other aspect of it also is that we always consider it as um, as kind of a joint ownership whether it's a real ownership in the sense of uh, 
owning some piece of land or, or some uh, uh, some equipment or something like that, or even uh, uh, if it's an artistic uh, project that even authors write or uh, intellectual property right. <clears throat> but uh, this uh, joint uh, uh, joint uh, property is, uh, is actually only it it always fall apart because we we see ourselves as a collective. It always works in some way as a, a um, as a uh, uh, how you call it. Um, a, a joint share company, and it always falls apart to its uh, to its basic uh, uh, ownership right. Um, and uh, I, I was studying for a long time now uh, the the idea of a, a socially owned property in Yugoslavia, and how it was through the uh, through the different uh, stages that Yugoslavia uh, went uh, to how how it was privatized and how finally it ended up just being a, a non I mean physical uh, a property uh, and uh, like land, machines, uh, houses, and so on. And uh, basically, through the wars, it was uh, looted. Uh, and then after the wars, of course, through privatization. Um, but what I, my, my uh, uh, from, from this research, my conclusion was that what changed in the socially owned properties was not uh, the idea of property, but the idea of society. And, uh, and this came about because uh, um, before 74, before the constitution of 74, uh, the political subject of Yugoslavia was the working people, uh, people with a big P. Uh, like, uh, uh, and and afterwards it became working people with a small P and and citizens. So. Uh, the idea of society was it changed its form from uh, from a generic uh, noun to a uh, assemblage of uh, individuals. And when it when this happened, then the socially owned property uh, became instead of being one thing and. Uh, which many things could happen with uh, it, instead of being basically an assemblage of social relations, it became an assemblage of individuals. And the property, uh, instead of being one, one thing, uh, became a shareholder company which could be later divided in different ways. Uh, so um, so the, I said, you know, how, so I think as we said, as we talked before, I think that um, uh, uh, it's not about finding so much the, um, the right form of collectivity, but it's about gathering ourselves under some generic name in which we can uh, basically uh, 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 again uh, shift the, uh, the 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 structure from uh, from a conglomerate of, of individuals 
to a, 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 an assemblage of social relations in which doesn't in social relations I don't mean just relations between people but also relation with nature relation with technology relation between nature and technology uh, uh, and so on and then uh, other um, generic nouns like work nature and and uh, can uh, be socialized again work will not be just the uh, workplaces and the uh, working times but it work will be a, a something that everybody participates in without <coughs> the need the need to divide it in, in order to commodify it. and basically this is the I, I feel that this idea of a generic uh, uh, um, the um, generic noun in, um, under which uh, different social relations can uh, occur is uh, not only like a, a key uh, idea uh, but uh, but it also uh, it demands a shift in our perception of ourselves which is the hardest uh, uh, the hardest demand that it, we are the hardest challenge we are facing now because we're still all uh, uh, conceiving of ourselves as a uh, uh, you know and, and many of the Marxist uh, interpretation uh, interpretations of Marx is uh, see um, Marxism or communism or socialism as a system in which each person can uh, fulfill themselves individually and then as an assemblage of, of, of individuals we will be happier. But I think that uh, uh, this this is not my let's say this is not my interpretation of Marx. Marx does not come uh, from the point of view of the individual, but rather from the uh, uh, from the uh, point of view of the of the generic uh, name, whether it's uh, the species being that we were talking about with the um, uh, with the Jewish question or the working class. There's always a generic name. And uh, and in also in the manu uh, manuscripts, uh, explicitly explains that. And uh, this is kind of something that was uh, very much uh, overlooked, especially uh, because the um, uh, let's say Marxism in the last uh, uh, forty years developed mainly in youth universities, which can which many people there can't conceive any other be, being in the world in any other form rather than individualism. Uh, so um, basically this is what I wanted to put up for discussion. Uh, and uh, I would be very happy if we can continue from here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now everybody can put uh, the video. <laughs> I remember that uh, maybe uh, a year or two years ago, uh, 
uh, it was really difficult for me to understand. Uh, if you remember, we had the various arguments uh, to, to even conceive that there can be a difference between uh, socially owned property and uh, what, we, what we called here uh, state property. Mm -hmm. No, no, state property. Uh, and only much later during, uh, I mean, with a lot of patience from you, I understood that it can, uh, uh, this idea that the idea of society changes. Mm -hmm. But it's, all, it, it's still, um, because of how we are uh, conceived, it's still uh, mind, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's blocking people, mm -hmm. I think, not uh, allowing them to... You know, now, uh, now that uh, now uh, we started in Belgrade uh, uh, a new um, a social center, and uh, part of the social center is the solidary kitchen. Uh, and it was started by uh, in April when the COVID uh, pandemic really hit hard. Uh, it started by a few uh, people few friends, basically, all of them uh, veterans of uh, vet, uh, various uh, student protests and so on, um, uh, active in all kinds of uh, left-wing organizations. Uh, but not any specific organization started. It was a few friends that came together and uh, they started cooking for for base then for the homeless and now it's for anybody who wants to come to the distribution point. But uh, and their their slogan was the uh, uh, solidarity, not uh, mercy, because uh, parallel to them, of course, the church uh, opened a few soup kitchens and other uh, uh, people. But still, although they're very aware of it, there, there is a problem because they're still calling, you know, using this, um, uh, this target, this, this uh, the liberal, uh, dictionary or lexicon of uh, like uh, public uh, like uh, users or beneficiaries or uh, uh, and it's very hard to find a different word because a different word would actually change the the social relations So it's, of course, it's not that uh, they should stop doing it, they should continue doing it, just... Uh, um. If possible, I would like to go back to the idea of urban gardening because you um, put it in the title of your talk, but then you didn't really discuss it in, in too much detail. And uh, um, I would like to to ask you how you see, I mean, this is supposed to be a discussion probably, so I, I shouldn't ask you for, as a question, but uh, put it on the table. Uh, to discuss a bit about um, the um, difference between uh, urban gardens from today, uh, which are this more or less, I mean, we still have to call them collective projects, 
rather than uh, pr uh, projects of ownership because they are rarely associated with owning uh, the place that you garden um, and compare them to the system of allotment gardens which uh, exists throughout the world and has different shapes in different contexts from uh, Russia to the United States where there were these uh, famous victory gardens during the Second World War and they were meant as as really uh, projects to, to offer people both food and the impetus to, to actually uh, work themselves and produce their own food and also uh, be confident about winning the war after all. <laughs> And, uh, and then how it changed throughout the, the Cold War in different parts of, of, uh, of, of Europe and of the world and um, how important they were, for example, in, uh, in Germany um, in, uh, in the 19th century and later they were called the Gardens of the Poor. Um, how, um, uh, you know, basically they were supposed to to give the possibility to people to raise their own vegetables and even to, to be able to survive for their daily food on this on these allotment gardens, whereas the the um, um, urban gardens of today, they you know they started as maybe um, in relation to this uh, new uh, hipster um, class. Let's call it that way. Uh, which needed a, a reconnection with nature, and it came uh, also in relation to other trends, as uh, you know, this eco living, this um, uh, searching for uh, ethical um, projects to bioethical projects to invest in, but associated more with a lifestyle than a real subsistence need. Um, at the same time, they pointed clearly to to the fact that is. Uh, uh, the way we live and the way we eat is uh, uh, unsustainable. And in some cases, it led these groups of people, I have concrete cases in Romania, you know, I'm not just talking in theory, uh, it led to people uh, forming these uh, small collectives uh, which uh, grew out of the city, they moved to the countryside and they started some real farms there, organic or non-organic, uh, not, not, it's not the point right now, but they really took it as a form of collective, even ownership in the end, because they, they went and bought the land for themselves and they are building uh, farms. They are yeah, creating uh, farms there. Uh, so it's, uh, it was a trend that started maybe just as a trend, but it, uh, it somehow showed the need, it showed the need basically. And uh, this need came also with this idea of collective or of, um, um, it came with the um, somehow understanding that just having your small family garden is not enough and it's not even possible because of all these uh, climate challenges and um, I don't know, uh, practical challenges also, that you don't have the time, you don't have the means to support a garden for yourself for the, throughout the entire year. But if you do it as a collective and then you distribute also the work, then it can maybe, uh, it can make sense and it can be um, graspable, you know, it's not just um, a play. Well, I think that uh, just a second. One, one second. And I would be very curious if someone has knowledge about these uh, uh, forms of allotment gardens in, in Russia, because I don't know so much about them. Well, I, I, I mean, I think that uh, when you talk about allotment gardens, uh, uh, in, in the 19th century or up to the Second World War. Just one second. I forgot the Chobar. What do you mean, Chobar? This is good, huh? Sorry, that's the. Risks of uh, of working from home. Uh, <laughs> um, I think that you answered your own question in 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 some 
uh, in a lot of ways because the allotment gardens in the 19th century were real need. I mean, people didn't have where to uh, get their food either uh, otherwise. And it was practiced in many countries. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I know it from Israel, uh, it was practiced here, even after the Second World War, especially when the when the new Belgrade was built and there was a lot of people moving from the countryside uh, to work in factories, and there was really not not enough food, either because they, they, they couldn't grow enough or because the distribution was not de de developed enough. So people really needed, really did it, not because they, they found, you know, they, they needed, because they needed food, not because they needed uh, <laughs> particular gardening or anything like this. And uh, so uh, uh, so basically people were giving were given uh, uh, asked for and were given um, part of, uh, uh, you know parcels of land uh, usually on in the out, outskirts of uh, of housing area that was not so far from the housing area and they uh, uh, um, they um, went and and farmed there um, i know that it that there was in poland also uh, but it was a, a real source of of uh, of, of uh, food it wasn't like uh, as you say, a lifestyle uh, uh, kind of uh, um, choice. Um, I think that this urban gardening now uh, is, uh, of course, not a question of food, but it, it does show a real need, but the real need is much more abstract. And the 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 abstract the, the real need is one of of uh, overcoming an atomized uh, uh, existence, a uh, uh, disintegration of uh, society under capitalist uh, rule, and uh, the the. Uh, the real need is in, in socialization, in, 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 you can say, collectivization, in becoming, becoming a society. And whether it takes the form of food or, or other uh, experiments is, is, is less important. Uh, and this is also the type of ownership that came out of it, because it's it, there was ownership uh, connected to it. It was just not of ownership of land. It was ownership of this endeavor. It's more like a, a, a art ownership over an artwork, even if it's not an art. I mean, not. All the collectives were collective of artists. Some were, but not all of them. But there is a there is a ownership involved, in it. and um, and this is very important to recognize because um, uh, there the was, I mean, in some places that I participated or. Also, from the outside, there's always a dynamic within the group, because especially because there are no formal, uh, uh, let's say, uh, there is no formal rule book. That doesn't mean that the uh, uh, informal uh, power relations don't work within the group, of course. 
Um, and and I think as much as it is painful because usually it's uh, it's very personal uh, because there is no rule book and because there is no officially uh, um, usually no no officially delegated uh, uh, positions like direct or uh, I don't know what a no contractual. Uh, uh, relation, uh, it becomes very personal. And it's a double-edged sword because then it's very hard to analyze this informal power relation without uh, falling into gossip. <laughs> and uh, anybody who has been at any time a part of a collective know how it knows how it works. Uh, but uh, if you can uh, uh, separate yourself, usually it takes around 10 years uh, from, the, from the personal, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, relation part of it and really try to analyze what what is going on, um, then maybe we can start learning from it. Um, because this uh, this is my experience. It's a, a bit uh, uh, embarrassing to, to talk about it. That's why nobody talks about it. But this informal power relations is usually what destroys all these collective e efforts. And if we don't start uh, uh, talking about it, then we will fail again and again without knowing why we why does it happen. So usually the 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 way people solve it is by bureaucratizing the system. You know, becoming an NGO or becoming this or becoming that. <laughs> but this doesn't really solve it. It just uh, um, it just uh, it makes it more formal it, because this is you know this is the problem with the comments. It, it is exactly this kind of informal power relations that. Uh, you know, how, how when we, you ask yourself, how is it always that the same people become <laughs> become uh, uh, the power for people in any collective? And I, I, I don't have a, a solution. Um, because uh, because uh, these collectives uh, are usually really built on the enthusiasm of these same people. So it's not that easy to just say, okay, uh, this is the, you know, uh, um, you know just a power play. It's, it, it's, it, it includes the real uh, investment whether in monetary one, whether in time, in thinking, in effort. So it's it's uh, not easy to just, uh, uh, you know, waver it and say, oh, we don't. Uh, but on the other hand, um, uh, you know, how, how do you invest so much time, effort, money, whatever you invest in it, and then not, Claim ownership. It's a rhetorical question. It's not. It's <laughs> no, it's. A, I think it's a situation that everybody went through and nobody talks about it because it's really embarrassing. Um, uh, 
Yeah, no. Can I jump in? Well, uh, I, I mean, yeah, I, I kind of, I definitely really relate. Just, uh, just let me one more sentence because now sure. I'm. Um, it's also, it was also a problem in, in many of the socialist countries on a bigger scale. You know, uh, that that uh, people really invested their lives in it and really believed in it without cynicism. But then when it came to give it down to the next generation or or give it to, to a different group of people or, or so on, then suddenly they they became afraid. I mean and it's it's really it's it's really human. It's not like uh, 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 and we I really feel we need to talk about it uh, with, without uh, embarrassment because otherwise won't be so. Sorry really please. No, by all means, it's a, it's a very it's a very important discussion that is completely yeah needs to be unpacked, and uh, the the forms of exploitation and self exploitation in informal uh, organizations or in uh, yeah uh, collectives that produce other forms of value right than uh, exchange value right. And I was actually, you kind of anticipated a little bit where I was going. Because um, I was th actually thinking uh, that the way uh, this the socialist environment was organized with all the five-year plans and uh, that kind of rhythm of uh, uh, things going on, uh, what, and the congresses of the party and then... Uh, this uh, very long duration of the leaders in power, right? Uh, so this kind of rit rhythm, rhythm that uh, the, the, let's say, the socialist management of power took um, made it the most difficult it did, I think, the generational transfer. And uh, that coincided uh, with this ecological crisis of which uh, people in the governments became very much aware of in the end of the 60s, beginning of the 70s. And, but this generational transfer was never actually, uh, I mean, it, it took in very interesting experimental forms, but it never reached, I think, the echelons of power that were needed to, to do something that actually matter. And so, but for, uh, 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 for our current collectives and organizations, I feel that this duration is even, is even shorter. So the temporalities of our collectives are more and more fragmented, right? And also the forgetting, the forgetting that is instituted once uh, uh, a collective, uh, an organic collective disappears, is uh, it's it's incredibly deep, immediately deep, you know. Uh, uh, some of the most uh, incredibly mobilizing uh, organic groups from the 2000s, you know, uh, including in social movements, uh, have already been forgotten by people who are uh, very active in social movements or writing about social movements. And we're only talking about 15, 20 years, you know. Uh, the, yeah. So, so the amnesia the, is, uh, is a common yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this amnesia is it's immediately deep. It's uh, all of a sudden, uh, it's uh, sort of like, uh, yeah. It, it, and it is a form of, uh, uh, I don't know, ex not exploitation, but a form of uh, death, social death of the the uh, organic collectives that um, uh, yeah we need to anticipate so this this fragmented temporalities in which we live and with our organizations 
uh, are much smaller right now than in the socialist times. Uh, and it feels like uh, the, they do live indeed to a significant degree on self-exploitation, on people who put all their heart and all their blood into one project uh, or another. Uh, and that is probably one of the reasons, I mean, I've tried to talk about trans autonomism for a while and I never managed to <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, the problem is obvious, but the, the going about the problem, it's not at all obvious. And uh, so, yeah, I think um, the uh, understanding the the management of uh, of the organic collectives is uh, something that uh, yeah we still need to to work on. Yeah, oh, I and in, yeah. Sorry, and, and I, in this <laughs> yeah, go, go on. Go on. <laughs> no, just wanted to come to continue uh, by asking both of you or all of you, if um, a, a response to that, to, to stop this self-exploitation, uh, could we reimagine uh, ownership of land and of the means of production in this emancipatory way? Well, to, I mean, to... rather, than, rather than imagining the complete end of ownership, which is highly unlikely, could we twist it on the other side and say that, um, yeah, we should use it in a different way? Is it possible this different way? Well, uh, uh, first I wanted to say, uh, to, uh, to, to reflect on what uh, Ovidio said, is that, uh, you know, uh, uh, when I, I, you reminded me when you talked about the uh, slowness of, uh, of intergenerational uh, 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 change of the leadership. In, in one way, this uh, one party system and uh, the long duration of, of, uh, of, of leadership like uh, if I think of Yugoslavia, for instance, uh, you know, in, at one point, Tito became a generic name under which uh, many things happen. Uh, 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 and many processes, sometimes uh, parallel, sometimes contradicting, sometimes supporting, uh, uh, happen underneath it, uh, and it's actually the um, this kind of uh, um, fast change uh, and uh, under so-called democratic parliamentary regime that uh, doesn't allow, on the one hand, uh, any continuum to form. On the other hand, nothing developed because everything is the same. You know, it doesn't matter what party you you vote for, you end up in neoliberal. Uh, so, so uh, on the one hand, in in in, uh, in uh, this socialistic time. Uh, uh, it seemed like everything stayed the same, but actually nothing stayed the same. And in democratic capitalist times, uh, there is an appearance of that, that something all the time changes, but actually nothing changes. Um, so this is uh, one one thing I, I, I was reminded of when you were uh, speaking. And uh, I think that uh, your remark, uh, Raluca, brings me back to this uh, uh, this question that uh, that I started the presentation with: uh, Can we do it as some kind of island 
in a local form. You know, there are many uh, forms, even, uh, even uh, um, already, you know, not very, totally mainstream, like uh, cooperatives, like uh, uh, NGOs, like this is all some kind of format of collective, uh, 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 collective ownership, uh, uh, you know, basically any firm you open can be, uh, there's nothing there if you look at the law uh, of uh, business or law of enterprises, I don't know how it's uh, called in, in Romanian, uh, the, there's nothing there to forbid you from uh, uh, creating some uh, uh, commune. No, nobody tells you uh, uh, not to uh, that you cannot, uh, uh, in your company's uh, status, say that uh, 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 that the uh, company will be managed by one person, one group. That uh, nobody forbids you to put all your uh, profit in in the in an endowment uh, fund. For instance, this is, these are all um, um, possibilities that are already ingrained in the law. In the uh, but the question is why doesn't anybody do? It? Uh, and obviously, it's uh, it's uh, um. I think it's it's connected to the way we perceive ourselves. You know, it's the question uh, that I asked before: when when does private property start? You know, for me, uh, uh, private property starts the first time you say I. Because you've already seen, circled a certain uh, territory which you have to protect. Yeah, of course, you have to protect a certain territory, but creating islands in a big sea of capitalism, what, where does it lead to? Like you can try in your small collective to decommodify land, food, uh, and work, labor, um, but on a bigger picture, it's just an experiment that you have tried with yourself and your the people around you, and that's all. And I think the question is how we think about scaling it up beyond the um, island, beyond our local groups. And I was thinking about what um, Raluca said earlier, that she knows some friends that moved out to the countryside and they are trying to um, to have a common property and to work. I think I understood rightly, uh, Raluca. I, yeah, and they are trying to have a common property and decommodify uh, land, labor, and uh, food. But after all, there's another question. Where do you go to put your island to? Because I know some experiments from of these different autonomous projects. <laughs> 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 Because uh, scaling up obviously doesn't work. We have seen it in, in so many cases, moments, yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't mean it shouldn't work. Like, I don't know if replicating a community into different parts, it will have the same result in like in the part you initially tried the experiment. No, but replicating the model, the strategies, the methodologies, the types of relations, this you can replicate if, if they prove to work. You, 
of course they need to be adapted every time to the different place yeah the context uh, that Ovidio asks about where you have to to look around you and start from what you have you cannot simply uh, uh, reproduce a recipe also uh, uh, one thing we have to take into uh, consideration is that we're not working in a vacuum uh, in, in the sense that, uh, you know, what goes under the radar when you're small uh, gets a lot of pushback when you're, when you're in love. So, uh, this, usually these uh, collective endeavors uh, don't get, uh, unless they uh, uh, kind of provoke uh, some uh, um, some uh, political reaction, uh, they don't get uh, pushback because they they don't compete in the uh, in the real uh, uh, um, how do you call it uh, economical uh, market. I mean, they're too small to make any kind of dent on uh, on capitalism. But uh, uh, but once you scale it up and you become a real uh, competitor, then then you uh, have to expect real pushback. And um, I don't know how much you you know about it, but um, a cooperative, especially in Europe. Uh, are a, a sizable amount of the of the economy and uh, in the 80s and the 90s when uh, neoliberalism was establishing themselves they basically destroyed the, co the cooperative movement i mean legally they made them into just usual uh, 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 capitalist uh, uh, companies and uh, it was only after the 2008 uh, uh, um, crisis, the uh, economic crisis, uh, we showed that the uh, cooperatives that uh, sustain the uh, cooperative uh, uh, fund, the co the, the joint it's a special fund that is indivisible and unalignable and these the the, the cooperatives that sustain it uh, were uh, managed almost unharmed to pass the uh, um, the economical crisis while the the, the, the cooperatives who uh, privatized these funds um, basically collapse so suddenly they remember that there might be an advantage to this kind of uh, 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 collective uh, uh, um, uh, co collective uh, property now uh, uh, of course now to re-establish uh, uh, these funds it's very uh, co very uh, complex and very uh, hard because uh, this was a, a, a collective accumulation that uh, was gathered <coughs> in over a hundred years so uh, when it was destroyed you can not build it up in in five six years it's, it's impossible but uh, But at least it was recognized that uh, that it's it's valid that it's it, it's it's valid and it's valuable. Um, uh, so I, I mean you know and, and now and on the other hand uh, uh, what this question uh, reminds me of is all the uh, now campaigns and movements to socialize. Uh, to socialize Amazon, to socialize Facebook, to socialize all these kind of 
a digital platform, including uh, uh, really commercial things like Uber and Airbnb and, and this kind. But this, uh, it's, uh, um, this brings us to a totally different question is what is the leverage we have today that we can force this kind of change? Because, you know, as Warren Buffett said, uh, it's a class war and we are winning. You know, uh, <laughs> so what, you know now that uh, uh, we are we are not even in a position of a real proletariat that can strike. We you know we can we can strike, but uh, who have, who would not <coughs> you know. Uh, so we're so expendable that uh, that that really we don't you know we have to find again you know like we talked about with the point of need you know uh, 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 when we when we going back to this question of uh, urban gardening uh, we need to identify the, the need if if the need is not to produce food, maybe the need is to collectivize. Uh, and then, you know, and then when you identify the need, you know where to, where you need to work. And it's the same with this. I mean, we need to identify what is the point of leverage, because uh, uh, obviously there is a discrepancy and in the in the discourse because the discourse we are now producing uh, on the left is a, is a kind of a discourse of morality but this is not a discourse that the capitalists even recognize you know if, if anything has been proven by the covid uh, pandemic is that they don't give a shit if the two thirds of the world die, of the people in in the world die. So I mean, this whole discourse of uh, uh, equality, justice, uh, uh, the value of human life—who does it address? I mean, you cannot come to a capitalist uh, 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 and claim human rights. He doesn't give a shit about. And then, if it's not this, then what is the real leverage we have? I don't know. I, it's, I, I, I really, uh, yeah. Depression. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Noah. <laughs> and um, because, of course, not, 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 none of them will give up their privileged position just because we ask nice. Um, Now, you know, there's a few doomsday scenarios, if you want to. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> you know, we can, uh, I can imagine a world where uh, the, the, the capitalist will just, um, you know, withdraw. And they they will let us live on the crumbs by ourselves, and then the small islands will make sense. But they will stay just small islands, and they will have to protect them themselves from uh, from the big masses that will go hungry and and so on. Uh, this is one doomsday 
lost and now the other one uh, that I see coming is the uh, wall. And with my, pred my prediction is at least something like four or five years, not maybe less. And when we get out of that war, if, if the planet survives, uh, then there will not be the, 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 the normal nation state anymore. And uh, I don't know what form of organization will take its place. Maybe companies like Amazon and will take its place and and which is a, actually the 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 real form of, of of capitalism because right now states uh, uh, in one interview we interviewed the um, in some previous project we interviewed the a, 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 a psychologist uh, working in the social, how do you call it, social center, the state social center. And he said, he said, my, my job today is protect, to protect the state from unhappy people. And I think that the function of the state today is to protect capitalists from unhappy people. That's the whole function of the state today. But this mark, said 150 years ago, you know, 170 years. Uh, the state exists to protect private property. The fact that uh, there were, after the Second World War, there was a post-traumatic stress in the of about 20 years that uh, allowed for socialism and the and the welfare state was an un, this was an unknown anomaly in the uh, in the continuum of history. And if you if, if you set these parameters, this is the place you have to start. This is the context in which we are living today. But this is the context where I mean most people don't see. It. And therefore there is no need to collect together. Or collectivization takes the form of a lifestyle. But if if people really understand, then they will create uh, these uh, centers you are talking about, Raluca, as shelter for the next world. And when when you put it in this way, then it becomes real. Then it's not a lifestyle uh, question anymore. In my Zoom uh, the other day, I was participating in, there was somebody quoting Wallerstein, who apparently said, I mean, I haven't checked the source, <laughs> but uh, he, uh, it looks like he said uh, a new world system will be instated by 2050. And uh, until then, uh, there will not be a peaceful transition. So um, I think, you know, a lot of, of this doomsday <laughs> you bring about uh, is uh, on everyone's minds this day and it, it looks like everywhere we, we look uh, this violent transition is very uh, visible and uh, yeah the question is what forms of collectiveness we can find that can also fight this violence not only uh, prom 
propose uh, yeah in themselves different type of, of uh, uh, collective imagination but also establish themselves as non-violent formations well so I don't, formations uh, that are yeah fighting violence I don't know, uh, in a declarative uh, way i don't know if we will have uh, the the privilege of being non-violent that we will see uh, you know, uh, uh, and we will have much worse conditions than uh, in the Second World War because there is no communism, because there is no USSR. <laughs> to support the resistance. <laughs> Lloyd, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of me? Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not uh, very far away from uh, Noah's doomsday. <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> I mean, Wallerstein was uh, seeing the bifurcation coming and he was talking about it from the 70s. And he said initially, yeah, you know, like 30, 40 years, maybe 50, 70 years. So uh, we are indeed going through, I guess this is the starting point, assuming that we are uh, going through the bifurcation of uh, this uh, system of capitalism and uh, modernity and coloniality that has created our world. And so the question is then, uh, how do we feel this bifurcation and what our alliances are indeed? And even if there's no uh, more uh, yeah, socialist front uh, or united front, uh, I guess this is part of the work that needs to be done uh, towards, uh, well, transperipheral relations, relations, uh, uh, transsectorial relations, uh, so not only intellectual work, <laughs> right? Not respecting the divisions of labor that have been imposed by uh, the order of uh, words and things. Um, so even if uh, the, the likely scenario is, I mean, we are on go, you know, there was a saying for, uh, from the non-aligned movement in the, that, uh, the Cold War has been cold only in the North, that the Cold War has actually been extremely uh, napalm heated in the South, right? So actually we are living through a war, through a very violent times of dispossession and, uh, you know, fires and uh, violence against people in, in mass, you know, uh, so, uh, the situation that Noah is, uh, is uh, presenting is, uh, yeah, I, I do think it's part of our present, uh, which makes it even more important for, uh, I think, for critical activists and critical thinkers to uh, avoid or not to avoid, to do all they can in order to not focus only on domination, because the, dom the domination, we all feel it, right? But to focus on uh, strategies of uh, uh, overcoming it, right? Uh, and on seeing alternatives. Even so, even if us uh, right now, in the moment in which we are in this bifurcation, all we can see are small collectives and small autonomies that may not be scalable, you know, this is still our bet. This is still our, uh, our wager. Uh, uh, maybe the question of taking the power will come back, who knows? May, uh, but for now, I guess this is, uh, this is still our wager. Uh, autonomous collectives and uh, with, um, yeah, uh, transsectorial, transperipheral connections as much as possible. Um, and again, as Noah put it, asking explicitly the question of
Mm. Ovidia, you've frozen. Mm, yeah. Still Ovidia, eh, here he is back. Ovidia, we didn't hear your last, Ovidia. We didn't hear your last yes. comment. Uh, that uh, uh, the question is uh, waging uh, uh, also one of uh, yeah the, the the philosophy of organization of organic collectives. So the way the wager is still on small collectives on autonomies, but the question that has not been asked still or still remains is. Uh, Again, the way you put it, the management of organic collectives or the, 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 the yeah. You know, uh, one thing we shouldn't make the mistake, I don't know, um, uh, you know, because everybody is talking about the crisis of capitalism and how capitalism falls apart. And it's really good to read the Pulanzas uh, and his critique of the Comintern just before the Second World War and how they were talking about, uh, uh, you know, we don't need to intervene because uh, capitalism... It will fall apart by itself. Uh, exactly. No, it won't fall apart by itself. And... Uh, uh, yeah. And and I think that we shouldn't make the mistake of uh, of assuming that uh, capitalism is is in such crisis and it is in such it reveals its contradictions and that's why it will fall apart. No, it will not fall apart. I think also that's why like uh, uh, any type of accelerationist uh, argument uh, makes me. Uh, cringe because it again it replicates the same logic the same kind of like belief that uh well it will all fall apart and by itself and uh, uh then we we will just have to pick up the pieces when instead <laughs> what we see is uh yeah more power more violence on the side of uh the, no it will not fall apart and we'll still have to pick up the pieces yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> there is one question. Only that the pieces are going to be ourselves. Yeah, exactly. There is one question. Yeah, there is one question from the public. So, but how about electoral politics? Do we put all our bets on on collectives, or we also join electoral politics? The question is for Noah, for Ovid, for Aruka, for Vladimir, that had elections today, and Ovid, for Madalena. That's a very big question. Uh, I think that... Um, I think that that um, the advantage of uh, working within the existing parliamentary uh, um, um, uh, democracy uh, context is in in the um, ability of this kind of uh, activity to mobilize and to raise awareness. But like we saw with Corbyn, like we saw with, uh, uh, with the Bernie Sanders uh, and so on. But I think it's uh, delusionary to think that uh, uh, that we will be able to take power in that way. And even more delusionary to think that the 
any party that will take power in that way could be sustainable. Um, so I think uh, as a, let's say, as a campaign strategy, it's uh, it's okay to um, to participate in a, uh, as a as a way of getting your message across. But uh, uh, but in any other way, it it just doesn't work. I mean, um, first of all. Uh, as I said before, uh, the 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 uh, the um, uh, the state itself, as an institution, was made in order to protect uh, private property, and. Uh, And even socialist states were supposed to be only a uh, transition uh, period, that's what socialism is, uh, to a, a, a final state of, of a, an association of a, a, independent producers. I mean, the whole Marxist idea of the, um, of the uh, dismantling of the state. Uh, so, um, so thinking about, thinking in long term about uh, 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 parliamentary uh, electoral politics is uh, basically working against uh, socialism and, and communism. If this is the if if this is the aim, um, and uh, the second thing is that uh, the one of the problems with this, uh, as, as it's very obvious now, is that, you know, parties are not, uh, uh, as uh, the liberals want to uh, present it, some kind of uh, an association of uh, free citizens. A party is a totally economical apparatus. Uh, so unless you have a, a, a independent economical basis, uh, you you don't have the power to compete. And uh, and the problem with this kind of uh, um, uh, left le uh, the the new generation of left. Uh, parties is that they they eat their own founders because they in order to become parties they have to appropriate social struggles uh, the only uh, uh, you know the, the only let's say better example of this kind of uh, uh, relatively flex flexible um, uh, uh, combination of of party and social movements uh, was was Corbyn in the UK, and that was possible only because the Labour Party has such a long tradition. It's a very established party on its own. So uh, it could uh, maintain this uh, right distance from social movements where it could 
uh, it could include them and not appropriate them because it didn't need this appropriation to, to establish itself. It, it was already established. But when you think of new parties, then uh, then if they don't have an economical basis and they don't have a, a historical basis, then they have to to eat the social movements they grow out of. Because on what basis would they would they establish their credibility? And uh, and one of the big problems with these new movements is uh, is again a, a little bit of embarrassing to talk about, uh, uh, as we said before, but this is usually made up of people who have really no experience in managing anything. You want to, 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 to take power of a state, and to, uh, to go against the big shark like the IMF and the, and the, the, the big uh, imperial, uh, uh, imperial uh, uh, forces, and you never managed even a company. I mean, it's... Usually, it's less of a problem mobilizing uh, people to protest or to to take part in social movements. But in the end, when you're when you're leader of a country, this this is the least of your problems. You know, you have to work in the international uh, in the sphere with with the big sharks of capitalism. Just jump in. Yeah, I just wanted to say that with the, this brings back the issue of the state, and also, I mean, I wouldn't reject completely the 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 you know the issue of the party of the electoral politics and generally of the inst big institutions. I mean, if we look uh, in history, let's say uh, from the you know in the nineteenth century. For instance, uh, the state had only so many institutions that were controlling uh, the dangerous classes, right? For instance, the Senate has been introduced, has historically been this institution that kind of controls, you know, whatever accidents uh, people, revolutionaries may be elected in the, in the bourgeois parliamentary uh, chamber of deputies, right? But now if we look... Uh, in the neoliberal age, um, the state is uh, uh, has a proliferation of institutions of controlling democracy and controlling, let's say, the dangerous classes. You know, it's not only the Senate, but all the proliferation of uh, information services and uh, intelligence services, the private bank system, collabor central bank, which are not social banks, and uh, so on and so forth. So the, uh, we see that there is a proliferation of institutions uh, uh, of controlling uh, that function against basically popular democracy. So uh, that leaves, I think, leaves us no choice that we have to permanently, permanently consider this long march through institutions also. Even if we work in this uh, uh, organic collectives, autonomous more or less, uh, the long march through institutions and uh, working with the institutions and identifying the autonomy of the state and which sector can be, you know, uh, worked with or if not invaded. I think that that's per, a permanent part, part of the task. And within this task, yes, there's also the possibility of electoral politics, right? But uh, again, 
uh, I think this is part of the this double task of uh, autonomous institutions. Yeah, uh, organic collectives are fine and all, uh, but they shouldn't or they should explicitly avoid any claim of purity or you know, <laughs> uh, and uh, these are not no cults, and so. Uh, uh, Definitely, uh, because uh, I think there's also a deficit of uh, not on only the no of the knowledge of management uh, of how to run uh, collective organizations, but also there's a deficit of knowing how the state works, uh, which are the sectors of the state that can be uh, worked with within the ministries, within the you know all the big institutions in the legal system, right? And uh, yeah, that's I guess part of the part of the task. You say it works perfectly, the internet. I smoke and leave you open the <laughs> so any more questions comments hi vladimir we didn't see each other for a long time <laughs> I, I would have one question. I think it's mostly to satisfy my ego, but uh, I wrote it down in order to be coherent. So regardless of the possibility of scaling up different models or uh, autonomous models and uh, post-apocalyptic projections on the future, what about the question of hope, unity and solidarity? in order to find a new political sub subject. So in, a, in any of this projection, is this option still valid? Like uh, uh, organically, you have large amounts of people which would get united in order to, to discover another way. I think hope it's, uh, it's somehow a key hope and solidarity this sort of values I, I think I think that it's not uh, there is no lack like, like, This is life entering our discussion. Ah, it's from outside. <laughs> <laughs> Some kid crying. <laughs> um, I think that the, if anything, then the COVID showed that there is no lack of solidarity and not even lack of hope. I think that uh, uh, what is uh, missing is how to take this uh, organic or this uh, uh, spontaneous uh, um, burst and uh, and uh, visible uh, practices of solidarity, collectivity, and so on and make them into uh, a real uh, power to to change the system you know it's not like individually people have uh, you know given up <clears throat> you all the time uh, actually even before covid you you saw uh, bursts of, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter didn't start with COVID. Uh, the Yellow Vests were active before COVID. Uh, you know, the you see all the time the 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 art spring. The you know you you continuously have <coughs> uh, 
social movements in South America, in, in the United, everywhere, in the United States, in Europe, in, uh, in, in uh, Southeast Asia. It's not that there was lacking initiative and, uh, uh, but how, you know, uh, uh, first of all, uh, I think what uh, has changed and that is for a long, long time already, since the Seattle uh, protest in 99, is the uh, lack of ability to articulate a clear demand. You know, because you can mobilize a lot of people when you're anti something. But then everything falls apart when when you try to articulate something that you're for. For then different interests, and we've been divided for so long into interest groups. And it's not enough to have an alliance, you know. It's it's nice, but it's not enough. Uh, it works when you're anti something. But then when you have to divide the resources, everybody's thinking on their own community. And that's why we, you know, uh, <clears throat> that's why we need to come up again with a generic noun. That's the, that's the only way I see. Maybe somebody has better ideas that, of course, totally welcome and, and possible. But, the, uh, you know, uh, when you look at, at politics, uh, uh, electoral politics today, I mean, there is no left. I mean, the, the, you look at France, you look at... Germany, you look at, uh, at the big players, the United States, they, the opposition fell apart. I mean, there's a conglomerate of small parties and one big party that is usually either totally right or maybe center right. It was, it, it's very interesting you know, to follow now what is happening in France after this uh, new, <laughs> uh, uh, after these uh, in, uh, incidents with the uh, with the teacher and the the, the other attacks. You know, uh, and they're again producing like in. Uh, after the Charlie Abdo, uh, the producing this uh, uh, this class of civilization uh, discourse, <coughs> instead of asking how how is it that uh, freedom of, of peace became uh, equal to to uh, Islamophobia. And nobody is asked, you know, everybody is blaming Erdogan for um, um, for playing internal politics with the with the uh, this um, these incidents, but nobody asks how is it that Macron uh, has reacted so fiercely just at the same time when uh, when polls show that uh, La Pen is going to win the next election. So is Macron playing less internal politics than Erdogan? <coughs> <coughs> Uh, um, and 
and and it, you know you see you see Johnson and a bunch of really this Keir Starmer is like total weakling. So really, there is no position today. I just have one comment because I will have to leave soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, just to say that there is a lot of uh, unity, solidarity and alliances on the right side of the spectrum. Everywhere we look uh, and it's quite, quite compelling in terms of organization and message and outreach. And um, I think there is an equal amount of <laughs> solidarity and, and even more probably and the alliance is on the other side as well. It's just that it's not so visible or it's not so... Um, maybe it's still too utopian. Maybe it's not pragmatic enough. I don't know. So it's very generalizing to talk about it in this way. But um, I feel that what the, what the right has uh, on the side of all that uh, form of organization, it has the actual power and the actual means and the, the force and the oppression and the, the equipment. It simply has the equipment uh, from the technological one to the suppressive one. Yeah, you look how the... And the capital. Is, and the capital, yeah. But I think in, in when it comes to, to riots or to, um, yeah, this form of, of, of political organization, um, the... I well, actually they, don't they, think yeah. uh, it's more unified than the left. It's just that uh, uh, it's uh, it's organized uh, all the time in, uh, in an anti-position. So they can mobilize again. Not necessarily. They When they organize around the nuclear family, that is for something, not against something, even if it implies an exclusion. But it is for for this ideal of the pure uh, uh, nuclear family, or for the pure white person, or yeah, even that in itself is exclusionary. But it's uh, it's not always anti something. I think I don't know. It's there are many examples. But uh, for me, it's important in order to to generate on our side more hope and more unity. <laughs> we need also some actual power. Otherwise, it, it will not work because we will complete, continue to be crushed by the police, by the military, by um, authoritarian states, by, by the capital, or simply by, I don't know, many things. But uh, we need some actual power and we need money and we need capital, yes. Uh, we need to organize with some support because otherwise we are extremely fragile. We will be crushed immediately as, as it happens right now in, in so many pla places and parts of the world. We agree. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if the work, I mean, if the world reaches us because the world is already here, we need to be prepared. <laughs> but how? I mean, this is the next discussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think maybe it's a good time to end. What do you think, Livia and Flo? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for everybody. Yeah, and thank you, Noah. Thank you, you all, I guess. <laughs> thank you, Noah. Thank you, and take care, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe. And yeah. Yeah. So when you want to say, Livia, some closing words, uh, sorry for not being able to stream it live, but somehow it worked, I think, better like this. Somehow. So thank you, Florian and Livia, for organizing all this. And uh, I hope we do it again sometime. Yes, if you need to get more depressed. <laughs> <laughs> we are here. Every time you feel happier. Thank you so much. <laughs> I volunteer a session on the articulation of principles of hope. Okay, that's a good one.